Okay, welcome to the next part in the series on the SKS Bubbified DMR. Um, you can probably hear the puppies in the background, they're being a little squeaky right now. You will notice that our project is not in the so-called Dragonov sniper stock right at the moment. It's sitting in a TAPCO stock with no pistol grip. And I'm not sure which way I'm actually going to go. I'm going to build up both, and we're going to try both out. This takes an AR-15 style buttstock, and I have a spare Fab Defense um, with the adjustable cheek riser, the Israeli Zahal version, and we will probably give that a shot. I have an AK grip from Magpul, which will work out very well here. I think if I get it a little bit sanded and a little bit fitted, I can get it really close in to the trigger. Let's move in and I'll show you what. So we'll get back to this topic again when we get back to the Dragonov stock. But the trigger distance from the pistol grip is a significant factor in trying to work out a new kind of stock if you're going to do a pistol grip. I can sand a little bit, mess around a little bit, and get this right up here, right up with the trigger guard. Okay? It wants to sit there right now, but I can make the adjustments on this little nub and get it all the way up. It will cover the disassembly, um, trigger disassembly mechanism, the pin and the ability to get it out, so we'll have to be able to unscrew it. I don't have a problem with that, I don't think that's uh, necessarily a significant part of regular field stripping, that's a little bit more detailed maintenance, so that'll work pretty well. The fit on this one is not perfectly tight, yeah, there's a little bit of wiggle, it is, however, tighter than the Dragonov stock, which is what we're going to talk about in a minute. The Tapco, and this is just one I have laying around, the Tapco also comes with a Picatinny rail for the bottom, because we are going to put a bipod on this, and I don't want to mount the bipod to the barrel. Specifically, no. So, this Picatinny rail allows me to mount a bipod very easily. Let's swap it out, and I'll show you the other option. So the ability to remove the action from the stock without re removing the magazine is because that there is no um, block right here on a standard stock. There's a there's a, a, a mounting bolt. Okay, I forget the name of it right now. And these stocks don't have that feature. None of the American-made stocks that I know of do, so this is a factor to consider. I don't really think it's going to be a huge difference in accuracy potential because we're looking at optics mounted to this, trigger mounted to this, everything mounted to this. Where it sits in the stock may not matter so much. It may matter a little bit to your sight picture. So with the Dragonov style, I've done some rough sanding on it and started to get the edges a little bit cleaned up, the mold aligns. just want to make it look a little bit better and feel a little bit better. The cheek riser is off of it right now. And I have begun the cut here. We'll get to that in a minute. Now removing the trigger assembly from this is not terribly easy or convenient. You need a really long, something long enough to get around this to push it in. You can't push it in with a cartridge or a short punch. Not a big deal, again. However, the trigger distance, the distance from your pistol grip to your trigger, you can see how long that is, okay? It really should be, this, this should really be back here, okay? So I don't like the way that's set up. I'll have to shoot it and see how it actually feels in function, but right now I have to say it's not, I'm not a fan. That's a uh, really long distance when you're expecting a trigger back here. And the safeties are always in your way a little bit. So with my size hands, I can. I can almost get to that distal joint, but 
that's pretty far. This doesn't look bad at all. It's not great, it's not perfect, and these wings are a little iffy. Um, but it works just fine. It sits there just fine. Overall, I kind of like the back half of it up to the pistol grip. I have no way of joining pieces from different uh, companies together, though. I did a rough cut on this, just hacksawed it off. Now I'm going to have to file it down until this clears. You'll be able to see in a moment. No, this doesn't even clear yet. So I'll have to file this down. And then the tail of the dust cover isn't going to pass through yet. So the whole thing is going to get filed down some more. And I don't think that disturbs the looks very much. I think it looks okay. Uh, because appearances are, after all, the only reason you shoot. We'll get on this a little bit more. I'm going to do some more sanding. Um, and painting. We'll come back to the video after I've got some more sanding and finishing done. And I'll show you how it actually disassembles in place. Alright, we're back. So I've done some work on this. I've got the uh, cut down. I've got a center channel sanded out, filed out. Okay, you can see that there. And that's for getting this off, the receiver cover. And I've done some light sanding on this, got most of the mold edges down to the point where you, at least you can't feel them. And I'm going to go ahead and take this cheek rest back off, that's why it's very loose, and I'm going to paint this. It's not that I'm really opposed to the black, but it's not a color I would usually choose in, for anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it a rattle can job. I'm going to be using a dark brown for this. To get the barreled receiver more secure in the stock, you could use a couple of shims and wedges, probably do some tape or a little bit of bedding, but it wouldn't be bedding in the way you normally think of it. The end shake can be handled either through a little bit of shimming here and here, or by tightening it all the way back and finding the location to shim it in here. There is an ability right here to get at where a blocking bolt could be put in. Um, I can see it. I don't know how you would secure it yet. That's a significant amount of movement that you can just get rid of really easily. Doing it all the way forward is just a matter of putting a shim in here, gluing it on, and you're done. So. I'll take a look at that as we move forward. The up and down movement, when you have the trigger group in, is minimal, but again, that's something that I think you could do, you could eradicate with a shim right in here, where this sits. That's actually what usually puts the pressure on an SKS action anyway. So to take this off, don't forget, we use the set screws and tighten them down, so you got to loosen the nuts a little bit. And then you have to loosen the set screws. So this is not quite as fast a field strip process, but it might actually be workable. Comes off. And now I can do my field stripping without removing the stock. And that was the primary goal of refitting and that was the primary goal of refitting the rear of the stock to begin with was that you'd be able to do your field stripping and not have to worry about that. It changes the profile a little bit. I guess it makes it look a little bit less like a Mall Ninja Dragonov, but it functions better. So so that's it for the moment. I'm going to go ahead and get this painted up, and then we'll see what our next step is. And the paint job turned out pretty decent. You'll see better in the light when we go to the range, but there you go. Now we need to talk about bedding the stock, 
or supporting the stock. We're not going to do an actual bedding job like we would with a Remington 700. You have a little bit of wiggle this way, forward and back, and it's enough to be noticeable. And there's two things that we could do to uh, alleviate that. Maybe three things. We have, we have some multifaceted solutions here. One, of course, is that we can take <coughs> this front part of the stock, <coughs> which rests on this handguard retainer. Yeah, handguard retainer. And we can put a set screw in here. Probably have to put a bolt in the back. Some, or a, a nut in the back, something to actually hold it, make sure it stays steady. And we can tighten it up <coughs> until it pushes the stock that way towards the rear as far as possible. That puts some pressure on here. And that's a question in terms of mechanical accuracy, whether or not you want the pressure on this barrel band. We can go the opposite direction push the stock back and push the receiver forward as much as possible and put a wedge in here. So that would be <coughs> this piece of the receiver right here, okay, which is your trigger guard retention spring. Okay, put some shims in there with the stock assembled and that will push it forward and that will hold it pretty well. That's not a bad idea. Probably for mechanical accuracy, it's a little bit better. You're still going to have the stock resting. On this barrel band. Your lower stock, I want to say lower handguard retainer because of uh, AKs and the similarity, but it's really not a handguard retainer, it's the lower stock retainer. In either event, we also have a little bit of up and down wobble, and if we drill a hole, this is a permanent modification that you've got to be cognizant of if you're going to attempt it. Drill a hole in the rear tang of the trigger housing so that when it is assembled, you can screw it into the stock right here. And that will hold everything pretty steady. And that will help with the lateral front and back movement, whichever solution you pick. Whether you choose to, to put a shim in here or shim the front. So I'm going to go ahead and make some decisions and figure out which way I like best. I'll take a look at all of the options and see what I come up with.